Hey everyone, Kevin Sexton here, Sexton Creations, and today on the art journey, I'm going to give you all an inside look of my office. Uh, I'm going to kind of take you through my point of view of my every day of my life, and it, it usually starts at 4 a.m. And here it is, it's a uh, Sunday morning, and I was up at 4 a.m., and it's, I think it's about 6.30 right now, and I uh, just finally got, been doing a few little things, I'm going to kind of show you my day-to-day all the little things I got laid out, all the different journeys. I'm going to be talking about a lot of the hardships that I'm going through right now. And that's the key. I want to show y'all the the hard, the hard and tough of it, of the everyday, what I got to deal with because I'm not some big, large company. So hold on. Let's, let's go for a walkthrough. Okay, everyone. Here we are. This is where usually I start out at 4 a.m. This is my desk. This is where I work on my... Editing, this is where I'm usually working on some, you know, Photoshop kind of work, new movie posters, or taking pictures of my artwork and uh, getting them ready to go on Zazzle and stuff like that. So, like I said, got the coffee here, and dear Lord, uh, definitely need some more right now. Ain't gonna lie, some days are easy, some days are harder. So, just depends on what's going on at the moment. Like I said, I try to have some inspirational things later on. See, I've got Star Wars, Frazetta prints, and uh, the one in the middle I actually got from Sarah Frazetta, and the two on the ends I actually got from uh, Frank Frazetta Jr.'s, uh, the actual museum. So, you got to have things laid out in front of you, like such as like my movie posters that I did my four movies on, and Jeff Bird, Mark Hanna's poster they did 35 years ago. Actually, let me get a closer look up at this. Uh, yeah, this one here is, is not one of the original. This is one that uh, they didn't have any originals that survived. So I actually took uh, the scan off the internet and redid it for Photoshop and printed out only four copies. And uh, with the four copies we got, all of them are signed by Mark, Jeff, and Merrill Thomason. You heard him mention him in the past. Uh, all three of them worked on that pictures. And they all four, three signed it, and there's only four of them in existence. So. And uh, down here, this is where I do almost all my painting right here and uh, some of my sketch work and inking. Got the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, got about 50 layers left to go on it. And uh, here's my easel if I want to do some stand-up work. Sometimes it's, you got to get off your tail and do a little bit of work. And over here is my, this is where, the, that's my waxer. That's what I use to help uh, sculpting and doing all my statues and toy prototypes. But right now on the table, See here, the little R2-D2s and stuff. This is a project I'm working on for David Chandler. He uh, was a, one of the stars of our Paranormal Chaser series. He was the vampire historian. So he's got three R2s that I've been reconditioning and stuff like that. And uh, then I actually got some more projects. I do a lot of contract work for a company called Battlegrounds Comics and Games here in Dalton, Georgia. And on the floor here, you can see where I have brought in a pretty good little mount from them yesterday. I spent a couple of hours helping them do some work and these are some things that I'm going to be cleaning, taking apart and redoing and stuff. And the biggest thing is I'm working in a very small space. So what I am trying to adjust my camera here do right now, I've been going through everything. This is my closet and it is packed full of like 90% Star Wars and the rest is like He-Man, Flash Gordon and stuff. Gonna give a sneak peek. Black Series. Yes, and I hate that they're in there right now, but like I said, uh, we're actually looking at, in the process the next few months, actually moving to a bigger space, and I'm going to have, like, uh, try to find a place where I can have, like, a three times the studio as this, because I'm just very cramped, and it's hard to make a mess in this place. So, and over here's another little area that I've been working on. This is usually where I set out and lay out projects that need to be worked on. So, I'm usually working on three or four, sometimes five, and then I have the next few in line and stuff. And a little ongoing project, I got back here this little model that I'm making uh, of the Millennium Falcon common room. And right here you can see a piece of the, uh, I get the focus in here, the Skeletor I've been working on. Two bad ones and I'm making them be good. So then I got my big Millennium Falcon here. This thing, this thing was rubbish when I got it. It's normally $300 when it came out new and I think it's up to 500 something now. Well when I got this thing it was just ratted out, no landing gear or anything like that and I've just been refurbishing it and cleaning it up. I spent like 80 bucks on it 
and I got it looking really nice right now. And as you can see in the floor over here, paintings, 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 paintings all behind my door. I got paintings all over the a reno wall. I got painted them so much paintings, it's, it's insane. And that's where I'm running into. I'm pumping out so much artwork. I just don't have the room to stock all of it. And I actually got a, a studio, a, a gallery downtown that we're getting ready to try to move some of the stuff into. Uh, Battlegrounds is I can, actually going to be taking some. Fantasy Factory is going to be taking some of this stuff to where it's going to be showcased and get out of my house. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's a, actually a picture of my dad when he was in Vietnam. Some really cool stuff. But yeah, you got the big movie posters that I did, number one. Can't really see. Let me see if I can get a better shot. You got number two back there, the ghostly guest. And like I said, this is, like I said, it's like a 12 by 12 foot room. And like I said, it's pretty cramped and insane. And the, the biggest thing, the hardships, I'm going to actually set the camera here and go a little bit more detail of the tasks that I got to deal with and the issues with the internet and stuff like that. So I'm gonna set the camera around, get reset up, and get you some insight of the, the journey that we're walking through every day. Well. Uh, gotta get another shot of that. All right, here we go. All right, and here is the, the ugly behind the story. All right, the biggest hardship with uh, being a professional artist and doing all the crazy stuff that I do, you run into, uh, you you wear a lot of different hats. And I know that the last uh, episode we talked about how you need to wear some many hats a lot of times, which is a good thing. But here's the bad side of it. What you run into, there's only so many hours of the day. And, and like I said, I'm always here taking notes. And the problem is, there's some key points to any kind of company that have certain success. you got to have advertising and you got to do research research is key if you're not doing research on your market researching on your skills who's doing what what's the next thing around the corner that you can pull in and learn and adapt to grow your business god research is key uh, my, my company's grown more out of research than i would ever thought of five years ago in the last two or three years i've been doing a lot of research and a lot of growth has happened just because of research and another thing is, you, you need some uh, time on the computer. And you, you got to deal with Facebook, Twitter. This right here, it's just ongoing. And it just never stops. And that that's actually the advertising with the phone and being on Facebook. And, I, and I'm creating a store. That's where merchandise is. If you don't have nothing to offer anybody, then what the hell are you doing? I mean, so, so that's the thing. I'm one guy trying to make the stuff. Then once you make it, then you got to turn it into a piece of merchandise. So that's a whole nother step. And once you get it turned into merchandise, then you got to take the time out to put it on a store. And then you got to turn around and take the video camera and, and start creating uh, like little commercials and advertising clips and stuff. And boom, that's another step. So right there, four big. And then after that, you got to get on all your social media and start talking about it. So you got five major steps here. So what that means is all these are doable by myself. That's not the problem. It's not that I can't do it. By the time I do this circle, uh, five big huge points here on say, say when I get the creature from the Black Ragoon done, I gotta take it through all these steps. And, and if I don't do that, the 20 hours that I'm gonna put into painting this piece has just been a total waste of time. So 20 hours, then you take all the different hours on these other four steps, how long it takes to plug it in. And now that initial 20 hours is actually has value. You see, you see where I'm getting at? So, so say if I just paint the piece and set it in the corner and I don't do nothing with it, I just threw away 20 hours. Now the only thing I get out of it at that point, I get practice and yes, I'm going to get a little bit better, but it, it, there's no return off that time. So, and that's the key to this business. And that's actually the thing that I've been the most, uh, my repertoire has been in the last 10 years. I've been known, I mean, I had guys from the Fantasy Factory, Battlegrounds. Bottom line, the reputation that I got is I'm the guy who gets the job done. Who actually says, I'm going to do something, I'm going to make it, and I'm selling it. That's the biggest problem with most uh, artists is they, they do art, but they never take it to the 
they go to they do the art which is A, and they, but they never do all the little steps to get the Z, which makes it a selling product that can bring them back revenue. And 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 I get it. It's tough, especially if you're popping out all the crazy stuff that I'm doing. So that's the biggest hardship that I'm doing. And the and the other art of that is the, is the advertisement is is the deal we have trying to deal with social media. Social media. I have a love-hate relationship with social media, uh, and I love it that I can get here in front of the camera and showcase what I do, and like I said, I'm not here to woo you people. Uh, I, I, I don't care about that, but I, I'm here. I'm real. This is the, the good and bad and the ugly of it, and I just want to, uh, but I like that platform that where you can see the real me, so I love that part of it. The part I hate about it is, is... I'm trying to do something real, and I know there's thousands of other people just like me trying to do something real, and they're great. And I love watching them. But the problem I have, and they have too, is we get our content, and we put it out there, and it's in the whole muck of all this silliness and all this junk. Look at pictures of my kid with the ice cream all over his face. Oh, look at this picture of my husband trying to hang up a painting, and he knocks down the lamp. You know, it's this bull crap like that, and it's... And I almost wish that social media can be separated a little bit, but like like YouTube. And I think I wish YouTube and Facebook, especially those two, I wish both of them had a like. Okay, here's YouTube for artists, YouTube for stupid crap. That way, you go to the you're going to a channel that you know roughly what's going on. This is all about artists, or one all about music. It needs to be segregated instead of, okay, I'm doing my art video, and it's getting plugged in all these millions and millions of other videos of all these other things, like 50 other things. And it's just, if you can divide that up a little bit better, I think for anybody, it would it would enhance the product a little bit better. It would give, because uh, if someone's looking for art, they are in here topping up looking for art. So they don't want to see all that other crap. So I, I think... I wish YouTube and uh, Facebook could uh, do that because uh, I think, especially like when we're in this little area where we're at, which is Dalton, Georgia, it's just, uh, we're kind of like in the shadow. The the South is like, and I know a lot of people don't get this, but I've done, I've talked to people, I got friends out in California, I got friends up in New York, and they get things and hear things way before, and everybody thinks, well, I hear all the news because it's on, not, not everything gets posted on the internet. There's a lot of things that's going on in the, in the world as far as marketing and merchandising. They do it, and it's a movement, and they keep it quiet because they want to subtly come upon you. And the problem with being here in the South, in this Bible Belt, we're kind of like, it, we're in the shadows of everybody. This this is, they're not worried about catering to our demographic of this area. They're catering like the big Miamis and the New Yorks, Texas, and big places where there's millions and millions and millions of people in one little concentrated area. So we're down here in the thousand, there's millions of us, but millions scattered within several, and, like, and even like in our area, Atlanta. Chattanooga gets a little bit of information, but still yet we're even below that. So and that's the biggest struggle I have. So what I am looking at doing right now I am looking at trying to partner up with about three, I think I got it, yes, three people. I got it, I've got some notes here on my phone. And what I am looking at doing, this is a, like a plan A. I, I got a good plan B and I got a good plan C, but I'm going to try to push this plan A because it's a bigger picture than even what I am as an artist. Because the biggest thing I see is it's not what I'm doing, it's 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 working what I'm doing with. So what I'm looking at doing is trying to find three people that I want to bring into my company and give them a percentage of everything as a whole. So and these three people will be on the same level. No one's tiered over anybody else. And then, like I said, I need somebody that's over to the merchandising, creating the stores, running the Zazzle account. So every time, and they're also doing research about that kind of stuff. They're, for example, they've been, hey, hey Kevin, here's the new wave is... Uh, workout pants that have a outer space looking uh, pattern about it. Can you design me two or three of those so I can start pushing that? Boom. See, I didn't have to waste that time to research that market to see what's the next hot item. Boom. They tell me I get a phone call to get that information, turn around, make it, 
boom, here's the pattern, send it to her or him, and then they upload it and put it on all the different products on Zazzle. And see, why they're making that stuff, I'm in here because the other person I got, uh, like I said, someone over advertising and someone over filming. All right, guys, listen, I just got done sending this merchandise to the merchandise department, and when they get it done, they're going to be sending you copies of that to the advertising, and then, hey, got, hey the guys over the filming and, and editing, well, we need to, uh, next time we get together, we're going to, that's another thing we need to make sure we uh, bring up and advertise it on video. So you see what I'm saying? We've got merchandising, advertising, filming. And that way, the advertising, of course, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that other bullcrap. And the filming guy is running the camera, editing the videos, posting them on YouTube, posting them on Facebook, Twitter, wherever we can put a video, boom, that's what they're doing. I have a feeling, like I said, I've been studying this stuff now for two straight years, trying to come up with, and I actually had this kind of idea back when we were running the Paranormal Chaser series, but the problem I ran into with Paranormal Chasers, and, and I'm going to do a, a longer video on this later on, but I want to give everybody a nutshell for all you people who was on the Paranormal Chasers project or heard about it. We accomplished so much with that project. I mean, it, I am so proud of it, except for one thing. As a group, we, didn't, we did not execute to getting it out there. We, we failed on that aspect. And that, that's the only thing I can say I'm disappointed as, as the group as a whole. Because my vision was at the beginning, we had like 40, 45 people on this two movie project. And that don't sound like a lot of people, but here's what, what I'm trying to get you. What I was trying to get everyone to understand is I, I gave them access to take pictures behind the scenes when we were filming, to go up to somebody, hey, what's your thoughts on it? Just do whatever. I didn't care what it was, but then turn around, make sure you post it on your Facebook, Twitters, whatever you had going on. I said, you're, you're not advertising me, you're advertising yourself. So... Like one girl that was on our film, I told her, I said, hey, your mom's there all the time. Your dad's there. Tell them to ask you questions with the, with us filming in behind in the background. You know, not when the camera's running, of course, but, you know, advertise yourself about it. Talk about the project. Talk about what you're doing in the project. Push yourself. Because when you're doing that, you're, you're pushing the, pro the whole project as a whole. And I couldn't get hardly... The only time they did it is when I got everybody in a group. I chewed everybody's ass out after asking them months to do it and then everybody did it for the for the weekend and they just quit doing it if i didn't chew them out they wouldn't do it and it's just unfortunately people in this area is the worst they they want the gain off everything they want to hop on the train when it's fun but they don't want to get up at 4 a.m when you know i don't like getting up at 4 a.m you know i'm i'm, I'm getting ready to be 47 hell i would love to sleep to eight o'clock Okay, but I know I can't do that right now. I'll I'll sleep to eight o'clock when my body won't physically let me able to get. But right now I'm physically able to get up and push myself. So now's the time to push myself, and that's what I and, and that's what I was trying to tell people. We were filming a great project. We had a guy from The Walking Dead on board. That was the time to bust ass and push, 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 push it. If I had had those forty people pushing two or three little things every day. That's hundreds of feeds every day going through all the different social medias. We could have really rocked. But it got to the point where, uh, kind of give you an example, when Santiago from The Walking Dead, if he wasn't going to be filming that day, half the cast would show up. Even though they had written parts, speaking parts. So I, got, I, I had to get to the point where I had to lie, say yes, he, he's, he's going to be there, and then uh, say he had car trouble. That's when, oh, and while you're here, let's go ahead and knock this out. And that's a shame, people. And that, that's when I learned real quick to get rid of a lot of people. Because at bottom line, if you want to work for me, 200%. Because you know why? I put in 200%. Anybody that comes and works for me, I'm here to work for you. If you want to show up and you want to make something happen, you want to be a sort of something part big, let's go. I'm here. I, I, I'd rather push you, advertise you, make you look awesome. And it helps out the whole entire company. That's how this works. It's not who you can step on or who you can use and get something out of just to make yourself look good. That's not, that's not what grows a business. What I've learned that grows a business is you find other talented people, bring them on board, and you help them. 
I got other artists. You know what I do? I brag about them. Ten Smith out of Hickson, Tennessee. He's a school teacher. He's a, I think he's an art teacher as well. And amazing artist. You know, I we was going to be at the uh, Conuga convention. I didn't want to set up. I, I was tired. I didn't feel like it. I seen that the the show wasn't going to be that successful this year. And I'm not saying nothing negative about it, but I just it didn't look like the show was going to live up to past shows. So you know what I did? I called two or three friends and told them, "Hey, I'm not going to be there, but if you want to buy some art, buy it from this guy." Didn't have to do that. And Tim was like, "Man, why'd you do that?" I, yeah, I appreciate it, but why'd you do it? I said, dude, I think you're awesome. And I said, I want to see you succeed. I hope you succeed. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, That's how you got to feel for other people. That's the two things. If you want to be great at anything, you find other people that's better than you. That's the that's one big key. If you want to be a great artist, you got to hang around with artists that are ten times better than you. And then you know what you do? You find other artists that you get along with, that, that, that you know they're good and they're, they're just like you, they're struggling through it. Boom, you praise them. Don't talk about yourself, you praise them. You do those two things, you're going to move up the ladder. And that's where in the last six years, I started implementing those kind of things and that has took me from here as an artist up to here. I want to be all the way up here though, all right? But I see the revenue and the, and just, I tell you that, out of all that, the best thing that I've gained out of this whole entire journey is some of the most awesome people that I now call close friends. And Tim's one of those. Rob Brown, Merrill Thomason. I mean, the list goes on. David Chandler, the vampire historian. If I wasn't on this journey, I would never have met these people. And these people, like, like David Chandler, I want to say something about David Chandler, the guy I'm doing the R2s for. This is a guy, honestly, we pick up the, he'll call me or I'll call him. And I just met him like three or four years ago. And it's like we went to, we known each other since middle school. And we known each other all our lives. That's how, that's how close we are. That's how good friends we are. And it, and it instantly happened like that. From day one when we met up in Louisville, Kentucky, that's how it's been. And I said, and he is this, his friendship is just such an asset to my life. Cause, because if I'm having a hardships and I'm in here, I'm grinding and I'm, and I'm getting negative, which happens. Kevin gets negative. Okay, I'm not Mr. You know, I, I do have a positive attitude, but I get pissed. This this whole deal pisses me off sometimes. So so when I'm in that kind of mode, I call David up and he, he talks me out of it, man. Because he, he knows. He's been there. Rob Brown does the same thing. Merrill does it for me. And that's what we try to do for each other in our little community is be there for each other. And when we're doing good, we're, we're, we're the cheerleaders for that. When we see they, they accomplish something, hell yeah, go for it. We're so amazed. And I love it when these guys text me a cool picture that they did. I'm like, oh, God, that, when Rob does it, he posts something. It's like, bam, of course, Rob, once again, does something amazing. You know what that does? Instead of putting me down, make me feel bad about myself. When he posts something like that, and it's amazing, it inspires me to turn around, go hop at the desk, and give it my all. 200%. That's what it's. That's why you need to be around people that's better than you. Because to see them, puts Rob still pushing it out, man. That fires me up to go push something out. And that that's what we do for each other. And that's and that's why a lot of people in this area fail, whether they're a photographer or whatever. They try to be the lone wolf, and they're afraid to be around other artists like them because they're afraid that they won't be number one. Well, guess what? No matter what you do, you ain't going to be number one, all right? Get that out of your head. It's not about being number one. It's about being you, doing what you love to do, what you're passionate doing, and giving it every time you pick up a pencil or a paintbrush or a camera, 200%. Then you look at it, you assess it, you love it, next day you start figuring out how you can do it better the next time. I know that sounds horrible. You love it for one day, and then, and then you find things you don't like about your artwork. Because you do that, and then that pushes you the next time you go and do a piece to be better in that piece. Everybody asks me, Kevin, what's the greatest piece of artwork you ever did? The next damn thing I do. You want the best? It's the next thing I do. That's the attitude. Because anything else I've done, I know I can do it better. I'll, I, I can nitpick it to death. So... I know that's kind of hard, but this is this is what I wanted to give you all: the the good, bad, and the ugly. And uh, one second, I got dang. 
foggy in the head this morning, but that's what I do. I sit here four o'clock in the morning. A lot of times is when I do all my research. I'm taking notes, listening to YouTube videos. I'll be listening to a YouTube video and, and working in paint shop over here. Do it all the time, and then I'll stop. I hear something good inf information, write it down. Boom, back to to the paint work. So. So if you have any questions, and uh, like I said, this is like I said, this is nothing fancy about this. This is the probably the single most hardest career to go after. So, and but guess what? My heart's beating, and I'm going to be doing this stuff to the day I die. Bottom line, you know, that's where I'm at right now is just settling in, being me, doing what, and I I, I love this grind. I, I don't mind. You know, it, it's tough getting up at 4 a.m., but if it helps me be who I want to be, so be it.